Hi everyone, welcome back to science. I'm Miss Catherine and today we're going to complete lesson 1.6 in our matter and energy in ecosystems unit. For lesson 1.6 today, here are the items that you will need. Always encouraged, but again optional, is that access to Amplify Online. And if you do have your model of your energy storage molecules from last class, it would be great if you had that in front of you because we will reference it today. And then as always, if you have a family member nearby or a friend on video chat that you can share ideas with, that would be great. Go ahead and pause the video and gather the items that you need. Just a reminder, as you are following along on paper, it is really helpful to always have in front of you not only your new work, but your past work, because scientists, we're always building on our ideas and we want to reference those important ideas and discoveries uh, that we figured out in the past as we work to move forward and add to those ideas. If you are online today, here is your click path to get to lesson 1.6 called Examining Data of, from the Biodome. And once again, here is how I would like you to set up that piece of paper. Great, so last time we were figuring out this question around what factors affect how many energy storage molecules producers are able to make. And we realized that producers are the ones that really can control how many energy storage molecules are in an ecosystem because producers are the ones making these energy storage molecules during that process of photosynthesis. And if we were going to change the output or the product of photosynthesis chemical reaction, then I really need to consider the inputs or the reactants that go into that process. Because again, I can't make matter, I can't destroy matter in a chemical reaction. So if I'm not getting enough energy storage molecules from photosynthesis, then there must be an issue with the reactants or the inputs in that process. When we played around in the sim, we noticed that when I decreased sunlight or decreased the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, that that created a decrease in the energy storage molecules that were produced. And if you were able to do the optional sim challenge in activity four, you notice that the opposite was also true. If I were to increase the amount of sunlight or increase the amount of available carbon dioxide, that my energy storage molecules as a result of photosynthesis also increased. These relationships are really important ideas and we wanna record them on that piece of paper that you have in front of you. And today we're gonna to be recording in total four different key concepts. I'm showing you two now. And in a moment, I'll be showing you two more. So on that paper, again, here is how I would like that to look so that we can reference these four concepts today as we work on using these relationships to help us think about what it means for our Econauts Biodome experiment. So let's go back and here's our first two. Pause the video as you need and record them on your sheet. I also encourage you to uh, record those images on your sheet as well as they help us visualize this relationship and connect it to what we're seeing in our sim and in our models. So our first key concept reads, when there is more carbon in the form of carbon dioxide in the abiotic matter, more carbon is available to producers for making energy storage molecules. And when there is less carbon in the form of carbon dioxide in abiotic matter, then there is less carbon available to producers for making energy storage molecules. Here's our next two concepts that again, we're gonna write down on our paper. Pause the video to give yourself time to do that. And again, I encourage you to record the image as well, because that helps us connect what we're seeing in these ideas to our SIM and our models. So our third key concept for today that we're writing down states that when there is more sunlight, producers can make more energy storage molecules from the carbon and carbon dioxide. And again, when there is less sunlight, producers cannot make as much energy storage molecules from the carbon in the carbon dioxide. Now we're gonna think about what these relationships mean for our energy storage molecules in the biodome of our econauts. So 
So keep them in front of your paper. And let's go ahead and read our new message from Dr. Brian Corey to us as our student ecologists about what he may think is going on in the biodome. So his email to us reads, based on your investigation so far, it seems like there are two possible explanations for the plants and animals in the biodome not having enough energy storage molecules. Claim one is that a change in the amount of carbon dioxide led to a decrease in the amount of energy storage molecules made by the producers in the biodome. Claim number two is that a change in the amount of sunlight led to a decrease in the amount of energy storage molecules made by producers in the biodome. Before you share your findings with the Econauts, you'll need to decide which explanation is best. I'm sending along some data that may help you decide. After you examine the data, send a message to the Econauts with a visual model that we made last time, along with a written explanation. Before I open up the data that Dr. Brian Corey is sending us as student ecologists, I want you to just think for a moment, what kind of data would we need and what kind of patterns in that data would be helpful in us to determine which of these two claims will be accurate in what happened in our biodome experiment. Awesome, great ideas. So in a moment, I'm going to ask that you pause the video and I'm gonna make our data nice and big so that you can see it. And I want you to analyze this graph and consider these following questions. How has the amount of carbon dioxide changed over time? How has the amount of sunlight changed over time? How has the amount of water changed over time? And what do these changes mean, again, for our claims and for our failed biodome experiment of the Equinox? So go ahead, pause the video. There's our graph a little bit larger. When I was looking at this graph, I noticed a few things. I noticed that the amount of carbon dioxide over time was decreasing, was going down. And I noticed that the amount of sunlight and the amount of water was remaining fairly consistent over time because that line really wasn't increasing by much, going up, really wasn't decreasing by much, going down. It was pretty much staying flat and staying constant. 